Hey, what's up guys? Phoenix here. This video is giving another Yu-Gi-Oh! Pro Duel video, and this time I'm playing with the Perform Pal Zudio, uh, Zudio, ooh, Zodiac deck yet again. It's, it's a deck that I really enjoy playing. It's, it's very much like the probably definitive pet project of my, uh, of my current format. Like, of the Zodiac format, this is probably the deck that I probably would love to succeed with more than anything else, just because of the sheer amount of, just, uniqueness that the deck has. It's, Definitely operating off of some basic Zodiac strats, but it's also operating on a very, like, different basis as far as it implements the Zodiac stuff nicely into the list, but also does so in such an unorthodox way that it just seems to work really, like, fluidly and nicely, but also being vastly, like, different from anything anyone else is doing in the format. But anyway, as you can see, my opening hand, I got to go first, is Double Max C, Double Magical Abductor, and a Sky Iris. So. If that would, if that had been terraforming instead of Sky Iris, then this this hand would have been even more insane than it actually was because then both of those abductors would have been able to trigger for searches. But because it was Sky Iris, I was only able to get one. But still, one abductor search is still huge because it allows me to go for my Pendulum Sorcerer and then Pendulum it with the abductor after I pop it out of the scale with Sky Iris to get a high scale that I need to Pendulum Summon. And then I'm able to make Broad Bull search for my Rat Pierre, and I haven't normal summoned yet. So I'm able to normal summon my rap here, and I'm able to go into a play line for uh, for allowing me to basically resolve a really janky but yet still very good fusion substitute play. It still allows me to draw four cards because my extra deck is really tight for this deck. As if as if you couldn't already tell, it's got the odd eyes package in it. It's got some synchros, and it's got the zodiac stuff in it. And with the zodiac stuff, there's literally only room for one of each of the uh, zodiac exceses, and for this combo, you have to use Broad Bull twice in every iteration of it. So you have to detach Broad Bull off Tiger Mortar and then put it back into your deck off of, uh, into your extra deck off of Digesto Emerald in order for you to even have a chance at doing the combo correctly. But for this one, it's even weirder because I've got to make Broad Bull once to search Rep here, and I've got to make Broad Bull again to search for the, uh, the Lunar Light Black Sheep in order to get Fusion Substitute. And then depending on how much further I'm trying to go with it, I'd have to shuffle back Broad Bull a third time before I could make it. But uh, with this with this situation, with the way that I'm doing the combo here and now, you'll see that that's not actually the case because you end up leaving the uh, the Warbo and the Broad Bull out. And so instead of fusing away with the Emerald, I'm sitting here debating my options and counting like spaces and what my special summon uh, is going to look like, what my special summons would be. Uh, but basically, I just decide to go with uh, with the Warbo and the Broad Bull here into Norden. And the Norden will bring back the Rat Pierre, um, or just like an Abductor. Whatever the whatever four you bring back off the, off the Norden here is irrelevant because you're just going to be putting Dryden over that Rat Pierre that's left over. So you end with a Dryden with one material on it, which is the same as the normal Fusion Substitute combo. But in this one, you leave the uh, with this one because you had to make the Broad Bull first to search Rat Pierre. Uh, you don't get to resolve. Uh, you don't get to resolve uh, multiple Emeralds, but you do get to leave Emerald up and then search. Uh, then uh, make King of the Feralimps. And search for the lizard draw, which I do here. Uh, so I get to do Get Turtle Lizard Draw. So that's why I added Skullcrabat Joker and Get Turtle, because I knew that I was going to be able to add Lizard Draw at some point off of King of the Fair Lamps. Uh, but so from here, I've just got tons of cards. I didn't draw into any like settables like Dimensional Barrier or anything like that. Uh, so this, <laughs> I just put the Archfiend Eccentric in my scale just to threaten with it, uh, because I'm not really like in any position to where I should feel like I should be worried about that Archfiend Eccentric going away. Um, and like putting the Arch Phoenix centric there just threatens your back rows going away uh, very effectively. But so he just sets four and passes turn. I've got double maxi in hand. I'd love to use either of them. And then I draw a dimensional barrier for turn and just use the Arch Phoenix centric straight away on the center card. And it ends up being Harpy's uh, Feather Storm, the new card that we get in Duelist Sagas, I believe, is when we're getting that released to us. So like very soon. Uh, so at this point, I know that he's playing like Harpies definitively. We've played uh, some matches earlier in the day, and he was playing Harpies, but I had no idea of knowing whether or not he had changed the deck up or not for the recording, or if he had, um, or if he had stayed with the Harpy deck. Now, Harpies Featherstorm is an interesting card. Um, I didn't know we were getting it when we were getting it. I didn't know we were getting it in Duelist Sagas, and it's a card that has a lot of potential applications as far as like the Harpy deck being able to play going second against fields of uh, Zodiac Beast cards because you could normal summon something like Harpy Channeler, um, and if you have something like Harpy's, uh, Harpy's Hunting Ground on the board, you're going to be threatening back row already, naturally, and so they're going to be incentivized to want to pop your cards with Dryden, and then you could use Featherstorm from your hand because that's its effect, 
if you control a harpy card, you can activate it from your hand. <laughs> so it's it's a trap that can be activated from hand, which is a very solid addition to the deck, and it just negates all of your opponent's monster effects for the entire turn. Uh, so like that's that's actually an insane card effect when you actually take the time to look at it and read it, and it's just like, hmm, top notch. Uh, but anyway, so as you can see, I'm just doing my plays here, doing my uh, turn structure. I uh, set up my scales, I uh, think I drew another two cards and I drew Mask Chameleon, or I just searched Mask Chameleon, I can't actually remember. Uh, but I'm just able to cycle my cards in, get another Emerald draw, get another Emerald made while popping the first Emerald. I think I popped it off Sky Iris if I remember correctly, but there's a Barrage there as well, so it could have been popped off Barrage. Uh, but then, you know, just getting the Emerald off the board into the graveyard so that I can make a second Emerald and recycle it to make my resource pool infinite is what I'm trying to do here. So, um, so using Skyr, so I guess I did pop it off Barrage um, in some capacity. And uh, using Skyr to search for my uh, for my Light Phoenix and then Penduluming 2. I don't have any more, like, performer pal targets in my deck other than Sorcerer, so Sorcerer can't activate. But from here, I'm just trying to clear as many cards as possible and ensure a very, like, clean-cut, like, game shot. So I decided to make Ignister, using Ignister to pop my Geturtle out of my scale because I'm out of lizard draws in my deck. Or no, I don't pop a good turtle. That's so interesting. I thought I was just out of good turtles, so or out of lizard draws, so I thought I just 100 percent popped the good turtle. But I guess I just didn't have a high scale, so I guess it was just better for me to pop the abductor. I'm trying to relive my own thought process at the time, but I popped the abductor, spin a backer, and then use Odd Eyes Fusion to put Vortex on board. So he's only got two cards left, and Vortex gets to negate one of them, and so it's just overall it just seems like a strong, uh, a strong situation for me to be in. But so he goes first, and he activates Harpy Sign. Uh, or Hysteric Sign, and adds Elegant Egotist and sets three and passes turn. So I'm positive that almost one of the, at least one of those is probably just that Elegant Egotist trying to bluff with it. So I just use the Arch Phoenix Centric and pop a random card. It ends up being Storming Mirror Force, and so I'm I'm really okay with that. So I summon my Skullcrabat Joker, add my uh, Pendulum Sorcerer to hand, and put my Sorcerer in the scale while activating Sky Iris in order to get access to a low scale so that I can then Pendulum Summon out. Now I've got Tinky in my hand as well, which means I have access to a rat or a low scale if need be, depending on what the situation is. But so I just decide to scale up with my uh, Lizard Draw as the high scale, and then my Light Phoenix is the low scale. And at this point he flips Dimensional Barrier calling Pendulum. So I'm like, okay, this is fine. So we use Tinky to add the uh, the rat Pierre, and then I get to Pendulum summon that rat Pierre from hand. So he has one back row left, and at this point I'm positive that that's Elegant Egotist. Um, like, it just makes no sense not to bluff with it, because, like, if you're trying to just set a menacing-looking amount of back row to make me not want to advance my plays, you're gonna set a card you just got for free. <laughs> like, you're going to do that. It's not something you're not gonna do. But so, I start doing my rat combo, go into the Broad Bull, uh, go into uh, searching my uh, Lunalite Black Sheep, go into my Tiger Mortar here, and here is why it's really weird for the combo for this deck. Like I said, you can only have the extra deck space to play one of each of the Zoo Exceses, and you have to resolve two Broad Bulls in the combo string, because you have to resolve the first one to search for the Black Sheep, then you have to be able to Exceed Summon one out of your extra deck the normal way off of your Norden play. And so what you have to do is you have to make Broad Bull first to detach it off Tiger Mortar, re-equip the Rat Pierre, and then detach it to summon the Rat Pierres out of deck, and then shuffle it back off Emerald. That way, it's in your extra deck. So it's it's very, sus it's very um, it's very susceptible to hand traps. Uh, this combo, uh, in spe especially in my deck, but it really doesn't matter that much in the grand scheme of things because if I was able to do the things that I'm trying to do anyway, I have already resolved um, like some pendulum plays potentially and stuff like that. So my deck isn't really as heavily reliant on this combo as pure zoo would be to gain resources because my deck is naturally a pendulum engine. So it can fall back on other things, and as you can see here, because I'm playing the Zodiac cards, on my deck is able to fall back on it instead of the Pendulum engine. So like, I'm under Dimensional Barrier calling Pendulum, and so instead I just decide to go into a Rapier play, um, utilizing my Pendulum Summon to start that Rapier play because of the fact that I already had a conflicting Normal Summon in my hand in the form of the Skullcrabat Joker. Now this deck is very low on Normal Summon counts because it's got the uh, it's got the Skullcrabat Joker, it's got the three Rapiers, and it's got the two Tenkies in it currently. So that's six total normal summons, so it's very rare for you to draw two of them together, uh, but the chances are still there for you to draw them together, but luckily Rat is a card that can be Pendulum Summoned, so, I mean, it's not ideal to Pendulum Summon a Rat, except for certain situations, but you can Pendulum Summon a Rat 
And when you pendulum summon a rat, you are able to generate resources after that, after after the fact, essentially. Because as you saw, like I just got to draw two cards and reset my resource pool off of the fusion substitute play, even though I just got dimensional barrier calling pendulum. And so it's able to allow me to set up my Dryden. To let, it allows me to do pretty much a ton of different uh, things. And as you can see, that is an effect Valor in my hand. I'm playing Valor in this list because it is searchable off Magical Abductor, as well as the fact that the pure zoo variants are actually becoming weaker and weaker to Valor as time goes on, specifically the ones that play the Fusion Substitute uh, nonsense, because the Fusion Substitute play has a very susceptible point in it where a Valor will just end their turn, and that is when they summon Norden to try and bring back Rat. If you Valor the Norden, then it's just over. They have to have another card to invest in that play, and at that point they've only drawn one off Emerald, and so at that point, like, they have to have the other card up front to invest in the play, or else they have to end their turn with no Dryden and no anything else. And so it's just, it's stronger than Ghost Ogre, in my opinion, or at least creeping up there to where it's, like, even, like, playing field with Ghost Ogre as far as being, like, versatility in terms of different, like, game states. Like, you can Valor, MX Saber, Invoker, whereas, like, Ghost Ogre on the Speed Void Terratop played, like, if your opponent plays it right, Ghost Ogre is not going to be, like, really optimal. You're going to trade the Ghost Ogre for them to not make uh, Emerald, essentially, whereas with Valor in that instance, if they go Terratop into Invoker, you're going to Valor their Invoker, and then you are going to, um, you're going to potentially end their turn, and they don't get Dryden or Valor, or, or, or Emerald. Like, uh, there's, a, there's a bunch of different options available to you as far as uh, what makes Valor good and what makes Ghost Ogre good, but Valor is definitely creeping up there in the format in terms of uh, its viability, but... So, I'm just doing some plays. I've, uh, I've done some Sky Iris searching, I believe. I've made Odd Eyes Vortex Dragon to invalidate that back row if it is something, but at this point I'm still 100% like committed to thinking that it's uh, Elegant Egotist because it didn't get flipped the next, like last turn or anything like that. And all he did last turn was try to Zodiac Barrage his Hysteric Sign, which is an insane interaction, by the way. If you uh, Zodiac Barrage Hysteric Sign, you'll get your search in the end phase, and that's pretty cool. The only problem I have with it is the Hysteric Sign can only use one of its effects per turn, and its effect at Elgin Egotist when you uh, put it face up on the board is mandatory. If that effect wasn't mandatory, then I think it would be a lot better of an interaction, because you'd be able to activate Hysteric Sign, not get Elgin Egotist, and then pop it with a Zodiac Barrage and go for the plus three in the end phase off searching your uh, three Harpy cards, which Harpy's Feather Storm is a card you can search off of the Hysteric Sign. So, like, there's that as well. Like, there's there's a bunch of interactions that you have for uh, for that, but it ultimately just doesn't seem like it works out the best in terms of how it could be functioning. So, that's a little bit of an unfortunate thing. But So, as you can see, I just dedicated my entire turn to, uh, to generating card advantage and establishing uh, my setup for, like, the, the kill turn, essentially, just to, just to basically out-resource my opponent is literally all I'm trying to do here, and it, it does end up just giving me the win because of the fact that I've got a negation on the board, I've cycled through my cards and ended up with a Dryden with another material on it, I've just generated more and more cards, and so basically I'm just trying to out-resource him turn after turn after turn. I'm not too worried about trying to kill him outright, uh, because if I out-resource him for turn after turn, that I'm just going to win from there. But anyway, this was just a uh, short little video because I haven't done a video in a few days and I'm definitely going to be trying to get back into the swing of recording at least a day in advance so that I don't have any sort of uh, any uh, days where I miss uploads like I have over this past weekend. But I was really busy for this weekend, so that was something I couldn't really avoid. But anyway, as always, guys, thanks for watching. Let me know what your thoughts are in the comments down below. Any questions, comments, concerns, or anything like that. Remember to like and subscribe if you want to see more content. And if you want to help support me and help like do things, you can definitely check out my Patreon page. There's a link in the description to my Facebook page if you want to connect with me, chat with me on a personal level, or if you want to support me directly, there's my Patreon link in the description as well. If you are interested in supporting the channel directly, then you can definitely go check that out. It is the best way to support me, as well as it also gets you access into a monthly giveaway that happens mid of the next month. Like, middle of the next month will be when the next giveaway will happen, and I have not decided yet what it will be on. It will either be for a high dollar card, or it will be for a good amount of Konami product, whatever the flavor of the month ends up being. But other than that, if you want to support the channel indirectly, while also, you know, just buying and selling some cards, if you're interested in acquiring things for yourself, definitely check out Second Chance Gaming's website, which is also linked in the description. They are a direct sponsor of me and this channel and I'm a big fan of how they do business. Their shipping and their pricing are both very good from what I've had to deal with thus far. But if you want to support me directly then that is something you could uh, go and check out as well. And if you buy or sell anything from them then uh, let them know that Phoenix sent you. But other than that 
Uh, this video has been kind of weird. Uh, the outro is definitely not as streamlined as my as they usually are. But anyway, like I've already said, let me know what your thoughts are down below. Thanks for watching. Thanks for your time. And as usual, guys, take care. I'll see you in the next video.